Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here with a bit of a fun top 10 as we visit the hardest, almost impossible achievements to obtain. Now we have all seen the normal ones on many a list but these 10, in no particular order, come at a time where indie games are really taking over and the devs found a special piece of hell to put in there just to mess with you. Now, these games are actually really fun to play but it depends on how much stress you want to put yourself at. Slight stress, diarrhea stress, high blood pressure stress, heart attack stress, or even death stress. So let us take a look at the evilicity, made up word, that some of the devs just thrust upon us. And coming in then at number 10, we have one of Rockstar's most epic and most brilliant game. Max Payne 3 was a huge hit with everyone thanks to its awesome story, gameplay, and full on action. But there was one slight thing people did have an issue with. The Shadows Rushed Me achievement in which you have to beat a New York Minute, which, okay, seems plausible until you re realise the list you have to do. So, here goes. You need to go through each level, staying ahead of the falling time limit on Hardcore mode, by the way, Hardcore, <laughs> okay. You have to shoot enemies to get time to stay ahead, but here is where it gets worse. You have to finish the entire thing in one run, that means if you die, you begin all over again. And there's no being able to take your time or anything because of the falling time limit. If you run out of ammo, it's game over. Oh, and aim is set to free aim. But with the online servers being discontinued from 21st of September 2021, it may seem impossible that many more people are going to attempt this. So I mean, it's kind of like giving you a cute puppy to look after to start, until it turns into one of those evil devil dog things that chews your face off. Now, here is one you didn't expect if you haven't played it. Race the Sun looks like your potentially nice, chilled action type game until you try and go for the last achievement, Queen. Now this is for simply scoring 10 million points, uh, but this Queen acts more of a dictator that shoves her stilettos in ouchy places, and let me tell you why. Now this game requires pretty good precision as you race past and try to avoid a ton of obstacles, including rocks, and other rocks, and further rocks. But of course, it's not a never-ending level, so you have to try and collect all of these blue tries to increase your multiplayer, um, plus try and find shortcuts and every other thing that you need to increase it. I mean, there's not too much to it apart from patience and practice, but oh, oh wait a minute, little doggy. Did I forget to mention? The map gets randomized every 24 hours. Yeah, so you can practice and almost get a perfect score on one you've been smashing out only to have it wiped away and randomized. So if you do have a spare 24 hours, you can probably get this done. But these days, with so many, uh, you know, so many people are complaining and getting offended by small things, it's hard to see any more than 65 who have completed this. But I know you're not that easily offended type, right? <laughs> right, anyway, good luck for trying it. And here at number 8 is another surprise to those who haven't played it, including myself to be honest. Child of Eden looks like a proper great game. It's an on-rail uh, music type, which is fun for all the family. But there is one achievement that can easily break families up, and that is the putrid Master of Eden achievement, which you have to clear all archives with the Gold Star Clear rank. Again, it's one of those that you may think, well, a bit of patience and practice goes a long way, huh? Sadly, you will have aged at least four years by the time you've got this one. So, you need to gold star all archives on both normal and hard. Hope isn't included, luckily. And what this means is, gold star, you need to 100% purification and more than 800,000 points. You know, with an on-rail music game, you're going to be thinking you're having a seizure or something with the amount of enemies and colours flying towards your head. This truly is a game of wit, and if you have extra cash, extra controllers. And at number 7 is the UR Special from Assetto Corsa. Now I remember playing F1 2013 and getting all the gold medals from that, and I was angry, I had a tear rolling down my eye, but I was so happy when it was done. This is on a whole different other level. One of the devs must have had a really pissed off time making this to take it out on the players, so... So as you can expect, it's a simple straightforward solution. Gold medal your buns on drifting, time attack, hot laps and races. Only the timing of some of these are so ridiculously tight, which take a day and an age to master, such as the terrifying Nordschleife, which is about an eight minute lap in a very fast car. You will want to never play a racing game again. Now, although you can do it with a controller, that method is considered like almost too hard. So it is recommended to get yourself an actual proper steering wheel. 
Of course, that all depends on your commitment to the cause of just being the 17th person out of over 21,000 who want to unlock this. Number six, embrace the void from Hollow Knight. Now for anyone who has played Hollow Knight, we'll tell you this game is so damn good, but so hard. Then they slap you in the titties by putting the Embrace the Void achievement in there. So for simpler terms, we have to beat all Pantheons. For explanation terms, Pantheons are basically the game's version of Boss Rush mode. There are four to beat, plus one final one. So those first four will throw ten bosses at you, nine of which you would have faced before, and a completely new tenth boss. For the final one at Hollow Nest, you will get, let's do some maths, 45 of the goddamn shitting things, boss after boss of unrelenting pain and exhaustion. Now, every say 5 or 6 boss battles, you do get a moment's reprieve as you can nip into a hot spring and bench to heal, but it's straight back at the pain and exhaustion. Did I also mention you actually have to beat all those bosses in the real world before you attempt this? No? <laughs> Soz! Now, although two things I should actually mention. If you are struggling with a particular boss, you can have uh, as many practice fights as you want in an area called God Home called Hall, the Hall of Gods. And two, the reason why over 750 people have unlocked this is because there is a glitch you can do which basically turns you invincible and you can get it easy that way. But I will leave you guys and gals to argue in the comments section about whether that is the right or wrong thing to do here. Either way, this is on the list because this shit hard, yo. Number 5, The True Tyrant from Death Smiles. Let's head back all the way to 2010. Jesus Christ, I sound old. Back in my day, I tied an onion to my belt. Anyway, welcome Death Smiles. It's one of those weird shooting maps where it's just an array of colourful bullets that pepper your screen, and if you have lack of sleep, taken some of your mother's wrong pills, or had a scooby dooby doo or three, this will nut a butty your brain out. Sadly, this has now been discontinued and I mean I say sadly people are kind of glad to see the back of this so what you had to do was make sure the game mode was MBL to get this achievement play through each of the first six stages on level 999 complete the gorge ice palace and Hades castle through jitterbug without losing a life because if you lose a life you go back down to level 3 and basically have to start it all over again Defeat Tyranno Satan. Then Bloody Jitterbug will appear after defeating Satan himself. Now this was considered one of the hardest achievements on 360 to get, and I hope the devs of this game are happy sleeping on the top of a pile of satanic money where their souls are ripped out. Now there are videos on YouTube and true achievements, so if you don't understand what I mean or you think that doesn't sound too hard, just just go and take a look and then laugh while you say, I ain't doing that. Number four. Got there from Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Now, something a bit more recent with just the awesome Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, but what people didn't expect was to be hit in the nutsack with a very hard achievement to unlock. So, we need to complete all hard get there's, which basically has us doing specific combos which consist of linking together several gaps. So, if you have done everything but you miss one specific thing to do or miss a gap, yes, you must retry. Now, over 1,000 people do have this achievement, and that is awesome, but it doesn't mean it is in no way easy. In fact, far from it. It is very skill dependent. So, some of you may smash this out as easy as pissing in a pie, but there are those specifically, uh, School 1 and 2, Bullring, Venice, and Roswell, that will give you the most trouble. Now, the reason people stick with it is because it is actually a very amazing game, and you get more satisfaction out of it than emptying your load. Of washing from the basket which has been piled up for months. <laughs> what did you think I was on about? Either way, this is going to test your patience, so persevere, my friends. Number three, Turophile from I Am Bread. So, who expected a game about being bread and toast and delicious on here? Nobody, but let me tell you why this evil thing is around. So, I Am Bread is a platformer, but it's not your typical jump here and jump there and avoid spikes type thing. No, you have to use both bumper and both triggers to move about the place, grip onto things, and it can take a while to get used to how the piece of bread actually moves and works. Once you get a feel for things, okay, going well, getting there. And then you come to this one, which we have to get A++ in all cheese hunt levels. 
The problem with this over other A++ levels is we obviously have to go quick, but this time we need to save integrity, i.e. don't take much damage. So tight time, don't take barely damage, and a weird physics-based game which is tricky to get used to. This can and will easily put you off bread for the rest of your life, so are you willing to take that risk? Number 2. I am a god from Verlet Swing. Right, okay, so another platformer which is a great game until you try the hardcore marathon challenge. Then you hate swings and life. So, Verlet, Verle? Swing. As you starting a level and you basically just Spider-Man your way to the orb finish line, i.e. stick a sling out, stick on stuff and finish. Sounds plausible again, but it is very skill dependent. All practice and no play makes you go crazy, but it does seem very doable first. Now if you play the game, you will understand how it works, and you think, yes yeah, son, I got this, until you start getting to the end of the 100 levels in under 20 minutes that you have to do. The runs become tighter, and of course you have to get to the exact point where you don't smash yourself into a rock and die. Nothing is luck based or even that difficult to pull off, but it is more a case of practicing the levels well enough that you don't, or rarely, die, and that you can fly through to the end of each level in the smallest amount of time possible. It really does test your nerves this one, even though levels can last just seconds, knowing you have to almost perfect each run more or less can leave you with brown stained underpants by the end. Number 1, Green Inferno from Kaiurinaga's Revenge. And here we have a game that I can guarantee almost none of you would have heard of. This is, first off, a really really good platforming game. Secondly, the devs must have hated the world popping these achievements in because a lot of these are quite troublesome, but nothing compares to this monstrosity of an achievement. Green Inferno puts us in the place where we have to basically finish the game in hardcore mode without dying once at all, and no, you cannot do any of the cheese methods when you die like quitting out, saving etc, you'll just get booted straight to the main menu. Throw in the fact you can't die, we've all tried achievements like that, but here is where this one particularly gets tricky. During a lot of the game, and even on a boss or two, luck on that level takes over skills. So you can combo your way through a buttery nan, but sometimes it honestly depends just where the enemies either choose to fall, or explode, or just stand in the way that bit too long. This is why two, only two people have been brave enough to smash this one out. Skill is a bitch alone anyway, but then to end up messing up on a run on the last stage because one enemy decided to make a beeline straight for you, well, that can cause severe chest pains and even death in certain people. By the way, stage 10 has been described as pure and living hell, so if you decide to want to give this a go, I can only assure you, take some heart tablets and have relaxing things ready to go in case you lose your absolute nut on it. So, <laughs> there we are then, and in no particular order apart from number 1 really, my take on the 10 hardest and almost impossible achievements to ever ever get. Now, was there any achievements that you have attempted or you've achieved yourself which you thought should have been on this list? Let me know in the comments section below, and again, let me know which hard ones you have done so we can all celebrate together. I do respect your cojones massively if anyone has done any of these, but thank you so much for watching, guys and gals. I'll see you in the next one. B -b -b Big love.